All right, guys. Mark here for Albuquerque Instructors. Um, I'm doing a wee bit of cleaning the day. Um, periodically, I'll go through and I'll take all the rip to chip out, and uh, just put completely new stuff through, as opposed to just spot cleaning. Um, I feel that it keeps it good. Um, I think I was going to take you a long way with that today and show you some of our holdbacks and things. But I think. Before before I do that, guys, um, I want to talk a wee bit about mental health. Um, under the current circumstances, especially. Um, for my day job, I work with mental health. And I, I actually have PTSD myself. So I'm aware of how bad things are getting for people. Um, it's not something I usually talk about too much. But I feel that, you know, there's, there's a lot of people really struggling just now. I've actually lost quite a few friends down in Glasgow recently um, due to uh, taking their own lives mostly because they felt that there was no help for them and there was no way out and I just want to touch on the fact that I know it can be bad at times and I know it can feel like you're completely on your own but you're never on your own you're only ever a phone call away for help NHS 24 has a dedicated mental health line with, the, with trained people there to listen to you and to help you and to send you where you need to go for the right help. That's open 24-7. All you've got to do is phone NHS 24 and follow the prompts to their dedicated mental health line. There's other places like Breathing Space in Scotland, which is a brilliant uh, site, you know, with the trained counsellors. They're open from 6pm until 2am and they will always listen to you. And again, they will get you the help you need. Um, as I say, I don't usually talk about my mental health and things like that, especially to the public. But I feel that we're losing too many people to this because they're just suffering silence and they don't know where to go for the help. So please, if you are really struggling, call one of these places. You can find Breathing Space online. Their number's there. It's a free phone number. And you will get the help that you need. Don't suffer in silence. I mean, I can be a pain in the bum to get a hold of you at times, but if you if you message me, I will get back to you at some point. Don't think that you're on your own, because you're not. Um, this is something I feel quite strongly about. Um, so that's why I'm sharing this with you today. Um, but as I say, I'm going to go through the other acts today, and I'm going to completely renew the rep to chip. Um, I'll take you through that and a bit of how I do things and then I'll show you some of the holdbacks that we're doing this year so uh, aye we'll see how it goes guys alright guys well this here is the rep to chip that I use I usually get it for the Urban Constrictors website it's really easy to order um, and even shipping it up to the north of Scotland here it only costs me a fiver so the postage is really reasonable as well so and I find with this stuff, it's consistent. Um, there's no too much powder. It's you know it's there's no a lot of hairs in it, and the snakes really thrive on it. So this this is why I use it. I mean I used to use paper for years and years, uh, and I tried a few bits of different coconut stuff here and there, and some of it to be honest was like mud. As soon as it got wet, it was like sludge. So I was quite happy when this one came out. And as soon as it came out, I ordered a few bales of it. And to be honest, I've been using it constantly ever since. So I'll just uh, I'll take you through the process of it, of how I, I do it. And we'll go through there. I don't really use anything fancy for to make mine up, guys. I usually just get one of these trugs, these wee kind of plastic things. And I'll stick it in that. It's nothing fancy at all, but it does the job. As I say, it's, it's nothing fancy, but it does the trick for me. I've never had any problems with it. Um, I don't use any specific measurements of water. I'll actually just take the trug through to the shower and pour warm water on it and just let it swell. As it swells, you'll see the stuff coming off the top. Uh, and I usually just crumble it off with my hands. I mean, sometimes, I don't know if you can see, but Sometimes I'll fill it that full with water and I'll just leave it an hour and just let it really absorb it. Um, that's because the room that I have here with the, the snakes in it, 
is really quite dry. There's not a lot of humidity. So I've got to use a, a humidifier to keep it up to 60%. So when I renew this, you know, the, the room gets really humid and it helps with the, the snake sheds and things like that. So, aye, as I say, it's nothing, no rocket science to it. It's just easy to work with and it does the job. That's me stuck some water in it there, guys. I don't know if you can hear, but you can actually, I can hear it sucking up the water. You see it swelling. And usually, as I say, is when it's swelling like that, I'll just get my hands in here and just kind of break it up a bit. And as it takes up more, I'll just do it more. It's really easy stuff to work with. As I say, it keeps the humidity up and the animals really like living on it, so... Aye, well, I'll let this swell up a wee bit for about an hour and then we'll cut back in uh, when I'm actually putting it in the, the trays and things. Well, that's it, the uh, swollen now and all, took up all the water. It's looking ready to go, so we'll crack on and we'll get these, these tubs all cleaned out and I'll show you a few snakes and maybe talk about some pairings we're doing, things like that as well. And uh, we'll just shoot the breeze for a bit, guys. Cheers. This here is the, the old stuff, um, you know, it still looks pretty good, but I can see myself there's, you know, things like this, wee bits of, wee bit of shed there. And sometimes when they, they pass their urate, rather than being able to pick it up in a, a solid blob, it goes powdery. So you can get powder through it, and I just feel that, you know, even although I'm spot cleaning them constantly, it's, it's best just to clear the whole lot out every so often and uh, get a good disinfect and a good a good scrub clean get everything out of there and put brand new stuff in it uh, if any of you do gardening I love my gardening, I mean that's part of my therapy um, this is brilliant mulch you know you, you don't have to chuck it out you can use it in, as mulch for paths or over flower beds it'll stop the weeds coming up and stuff like that so it's not as if it's getting wasted um, and, and your animals are getting brand new stuff, it's it's nice and wet and it's full of humidity, it'll help them shed better and they just seem happier on it. Uh, so I, I mean it's win-win. Anyway, I'll empty this, I usually just, I've got a wee green tub there, when, another truck. I just empty it into that and then when the truck gets full, I take it into the garden and I'll, I'll, sh I'll scatter it along the garden path or on the flower beds and, you know, as I say, it's brilliant mulch. So I'll stick that in there and we'll come back when I'm cleaning it. But again, guys, when I'm when I'm cleaning them, I, I use quite a simple method. I use one of these wee things. It's no it's no difficult, it's got a wee kind of soft scooter. And I just get a good clean. All that I've got in this is some washing up liquid. I get a good, a good scrub every nook and cranny, every wee corner, just to make sure there's no bacteria, anything like that kicking about. The, you can actually see the brown stuff. That's the, that's the residual powder that you get left over. There's hardly anything compared with a lot of other brands that I've used. But as I say, it's, um, it's no, it's no hard to do. It's no complicated. I've got quite a lot of snakes, so and in life as well. I use the path of least resistance. Um, so this is quite easy. It gets into all the wee corners with a sponge. You can just get a good old clean. Get a good scrub. It gets anything that's maybe stuck to the bottom or any leftover urine or anything that's on it. It'll get everything all off it. After this, I'll give that a rinse and then I'll give it a spray with F10. Now, I've always swore by F10. Uh, I'll dilute that down into a spray bottle and once I've rinsed all this soap off it and get it a wee, a wee clear, I'll get a spray and then I'll get a kitchen, kitchen roll and I'll just wipe that off it. Uh, this stuff here is safe for 
well as you can see the wee lizard the gecko even uh, aye, it's safe for reptiles and I've found it to be brilliant I even use this uh, at times of the year when the humidity comes up I sometimes worry about respiratory infections so I've got a humidifier there in the room as I said um, I'll put a few caps full of this into the humidifier just enough so that you can you can notice it in the air when you walk into the room you don't want it too strong that it's choking the animals or burning their, their airways or anything when you can just smell it as you come into the room that's usually enough and touch wood you know I very rarely have anything I mean I think once in all the years I've had an RI um, and even then it was very, very minor, and I managed to sort that again with F10. Took it to the vet after it, and the vet says, aye, it's cleared it. Hey, you know, everything's fine with it. So I swear by this stuff, not only for cleaning, but for helping with respiratory infections and things as well. So I'll give this a clear out, um, and uh, we'll come back to where I'm starting to put some, some rep to chip in the tub. Well, I remember the, I'm actually going through the water bowls just now, and this is the kind of water bowl that I use for an adult female uh, in one of these big tubs. And again, this this wee thing's brilliant. I clean them out once every couple of days, every two or three days, and then once a fortnight, uh, I'll stick them through the dishwasher because I feel that the heat cycle at the end of the dishwasher would kill any bacteria. But you know, the, the Repti chip, sometimes they knock it inside it and the water goes brown and if you feel it, there can be that kind of film even after just a couple of days. So, let's get this in it. It gets right round about it. No problem at all. On the outside as well. I mean, I know this is kind of trying to teach my granny how to suck eggs, so to speak, but this is just me showing you how I do it and how it works for me. The and then I'll get a good rinse in hot water and as I says, every two or three days that took what seconds so it's it's not a long time you know you don't have to invest huge amounts of time into it you can get it done keep it clean keep it a uh, bacteria free and you know it's not taking all your time so aye as I says I'll crack on with this a wee bit and we'll cut back in a wee while now I don't use huge amounts of this stuff because I find if you get it too deep, they'll just fill their balls with it. So, it's it, it's not only a waste of the Repti chip, but it actually hinders them because, I mean, who wants to drink dirty water? So, usually, I'll just lay it out and make sure it's covering all of the, the base, or all of the, the bottom of the tub. And they aye, that's about fine. Um, they don't need huge amounts. As I say, if it's too deep, it's, they'll move round about their water bowl all the time, and they just tip it in and tip it in constantly, and you end up throwing it out anyway. The as I say, that's a, a bit of a waste. These tubs are not your your usual that you'd see a lot of the the big breeders doing. You know, with their, their vision tubs and things. I mean, eventually, I'd like to go to Freedom Breeder Racks. But um, the racks I'm using just now with these tubs are racks that I built. They, they hold their heat fantastically. Um, doesn't it take a huge amount of skill to build them? Um, in each rack, there's three heat cables. And they're being running, as you can see, the, the thermostats up the top that are tied on there. Each rack has got its own thermostat and it's running three 80 watt cables. So, aye, I mean, the smaller ones are for males or females that were growing on. And the big ones there are for their big breeding females. And as you can see, there's a huge amount of space in there for them. We've actually got to put um, hides in some of them. Because they're that big that the females feel a, a bit insecure. So, aye, I mean, these are doing brilliantly now. Maybe in a few years we'll invest in a a couple of really nice racks of Freedom Breeder. Eh? At least then, with the Freedom Breeder racks, you know, you can move them around a bit easier and things like that. And then you've got the table that you can pull out 
I mean, that's about the only downfall with the ones we've got. These things hold their heat perfectly. It doesn't matter what the temperature is in the house. You know, these things hold their, their, their temperature perfectly. I've got a wee thermostat in at the back, or a thermometer in the back, a few of them, and one in the front, a few of them, in each rack. And that gives me a really good reading. And even in the front, you know, they're, they're never under 29, 28 degrees. Uh, so the wood really holds its heat well. Um, it holds the humidity. I don't know if you can see, I've got a wee female there in the middle. She's all steamed up there now because she's in shed, so I've given her an extra, an extra scooty water. Which is a thing actually, guys. I use one of these uh, pumps right here. I use one of these things, the, just for to spray them and keep the humidity up and things. The problem I find that after a few uses, it just seems that the pump doesn't work so much. Uh, it seems to start leaking back the way for some reason. So if any user using a really good one of these, give me a shout and let me know because I'm buying these by the, the half dozen at a time and going through them like you wouldn't believe. They just they don't seem to hold their, their pressure for some reason. Anyway, we'll get back on with this. Uh, aye, as I was saying, you don't need a huge depth in there because all they'll do is they'll wriggle down into it and then they'll push all the stuff in. So... That is pretty much ready to go there. Um, that's the, the water bowl. We'll just stick it in there. And they're quite happy at that. Um, I'll actually, I'm going to put the female in and have a wee chat with you about that just now. She's a wee cracker. This is another thing I say. You know, there's a lot of really expensive snake hides. See this? Anytime it's near Christmas and these things are going about, I save them. They're easy to wash. They're just the right size for your growing on snakes. You know? And they would just be getting binned anyway, which would make more pollution and waste. So why not recycle them? Just when you're cutting that hole out in here, make sure... You take all the ragged edges off. I usually just go in it with a wee lighter and just run over it with my finger. Just make sure that there's no, nothing that's going to catch the, the animal or cut it. The, and I, I mean, she she curls up inside that and she's happy as Larry. This wee girl. It's just going in the shed. But she's a pastel calico bamboo possible head yellow uh, possible yellow belly female. Uh, she's going to go to a pastel parkway and hopefully prove out that, that possible yellow belly. Maybe even get bamboo freeways. Um, but she's absolutely stunning. Um, she's one of my favourites. She just... As she gets bigger, she gets better. She's absolutely phenomenal. Um, and she's a bit... Oops. <laughs> she's not in the mood for getting played with today. But usually she's quite happy. Uh, might just be that time of year for her. Anyway, I'll stick this girl in and we'll have a look through what we're doing next. This is me moving on to the, the next one. This is Coco. She's the big heckling female that just had that mystery clutch. Um, the one we didn't know if it was blade or if it was just the inchy. Uh, she's already back up to 2.4 kilos, so she is a big girl. Um, hi. She's going to go to our. Well, she is actually just started going to our le pastel leopard head clown. So we're hoping for some leopard clowns this year. If we get really lucky, a pastel leopard clown. Uh, aye. I don't know about anybody else, but I find this actually quite therapeutic myself. 
just kind of time to myself, my own thoughts, just kind of working away here with the with the animals. Uh, I hate to bang on about mental health, but I mean I know it's no something that's talked about greatly, especially in Scotland. You know, people tend to get a stray away from it. But I feel that that's part of the reason why we are losing so many people that we love. You know, because we're not able to talk about it. You know, if you are feeling like that and you feel bad like that, talk to somebody. Talk to somebody that you feel safe with. You know, chances are, at this time, they feel exactly the same and they would be glad of a chat. Um, so please, I mean, it's something I've done for 10 years. I bottled it up and I felt like I was the only one and on the outside looking in out to everybody else having fun where I wasn't able to have fun. And it wasn't until I actually started going through therapy that I seen I wasn't the only one. That there is a huge amount of people that feel exactly the same as I did. And once I realised that I was able to talk and once I was able to talk things started getting better for me. Um, and it's been quite a few years now um, that I've been helping people. I went away and retrained as a, a counsellor and things. And it's really hard work. Um, it's mentally demanding. But it's the most rewarding thing I've ever done in my life. <clears throat> and it's something I would never change. But unfortunately with this COVID, you know, things are getting an awful lot worse for people just now. I mean, I, for me, I, I used to take care of myself by going to the gym and training, you know, and training for strongman events and things like that. Unfortunately, because of the COVID, that's been taken away from us. I mean, rightly so, we need to nip this in the bud. We need to get it stopped. Far too many people have died it already. But it doesn't make it any easier for people. I'm lucky that I live in the countryside and I can go for a five-mile walk every day. Uh, and that keeps me healthy. Some people aren't that fortunate. But as I say, you know, there is always somebody there. There is always somebody at the end of the phone. And there's always somebody that knows where to go for the help that you need. Uh, aye, anyway, that was just off on a tangent again. Aye, this big girl, she's going to go to her pastel leopard head clown. Her leopard pastel head clown, even. And I'm hoping for some leopard clowns eh, that we can then put to the I've got a leopard spot a, a spot nose there, and hopefully she'll have the makings of the Batman this year, and we can put them together in a couple of years and produce Batman. Eh, aye, I mean since I've seen that with JKR, the Batman is something that I've wanted and we've been working towards. So, something I'm really excited about. Um, and I've had a wee chat with her. Uh, and she's promised me faithfully that she's not just going to give us hits this year. She's actually going to give us a visual. Aren't you? Yeah? You're going to give us a visual this year. A beautiful leopard clown. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to stick her back into her tub. And I'll come back in when we're doing the next tub. Um, I think this might be a bit of a long one, folks. Um... But I'm in a mood for a ramble today, so aye. We'll just we'll just keep going and see where it takes us to. This tub here is the it's for Fizz. That's our champagne double head dreamsicle female that we got for Kerry. Uh, she's doing brilliant. I mean she's up over fifteen hundred grams just now, but She's, I feel that she's still too young to go, uh, so hopefully she'll go next year and we'll get some lovely dreamsicles out of her. Um, but she is doing fantastic. She's a big girl for her age, and I mean, she would eat five or six days a week if you allowed her. She's doing brilliant. She used to have one of the, the hides made out of the chocolate boxes, but she's actually got too big for it now, so... You just she wears it like a hat half the time, so <laughs> we're gonna put a bigger one in there at some point. Um, aye. she's 
as I say, champagne, double hay, the lavender albino pied. Um, we've got a we've got an adult female that's a just a double hate dreamsicle that's going to go this year hopefully, and we will put that to Kerry's male that we got off her uh, who's a double hate dreamsicle. So who knows? We might even get dreamsicles this year uh, if the the odds gods are in our favour. But I I mean I I love doing this. I just <coughs> put a little bit up in the, the room out the the rodeo the noise and stuff like that and it's therapeutic and you get to spend time with your animals hey aye what's not you like look at this girl she's absolutely phenomenal and she's still got that wee white spot there <laughs> that was one of the first things i noticed when Kerry sent me the picture but she's a wee bit uh, more of an adventurer I hopefully next year she's going to produce some gorgeous babies for us. I can't wait to see her first lavender albinos as well. I mean, I know they're quite common now, but just the purples and the just the contrast on them is phenomenal. Um, I've been lucky enough actually. I'll do a video once we pick them up. We bought a couple of snakes off of Hammy at Hammy Ball Pythons, and one of the ones we bought was a a double head albino pied female. So not only will we be doing the lavender albino pied, we'll be doing the albino pied as well. So I'm really excited about that. And um, we bought into another project that I'm really, really excited about. Um, was the, the bongo. I, I really can't wait to see this. Um, I've been wanting bongo for a, quite a few years now. So I'm, I'm, I'm actually like a 10-year-old boy jumping up and down there now. Um... But I cannot wait till this lockdown finishes so we can go down and pick them up off of Hammy. And not only that, Hammy has a absolutely outstanding collection of snakes. Some of the stuff he's working with is just phenomenal. So I can't wait to get down and see them again. Um, aye. But I'll stick this wee girl back and we'll just keep on working through things. And I'll, I'll pull her somebody out every now and again just to let you see. Just the... Uh, while I'm going through them, I thought I'd show you this girl here. She's a, She's been a wee bit of a pain in the bum for us and no went in the last couple of years. But she's a, She's up over three kilos now. And she's absolutely gorgeous. She's a super GHI. And she is going to a cinnamon blackhead Mojave male this year, so... So, wow, she's fairly squeezing on my arm. She's a big, strong girl. Ah, anyway, guys, I thought I'd just pop this in because every time I look at her, I just think, wow, she's absolutely phenomenal. I mean, just try to get a scale of her size. She's huge. Oh. Aye, I've got a scale there that... Um, it's it's pretty good, it's very accurate, um, but it only goes up to three kilos. And I just sat her on the scale and it just went beep. Ah, she's a beauty. You see the, the sheen on her, the pair lessons. It's absolutely gorgeous. Anyway, I'm going to put her back in her tub and continue with this cleaning. Just doing this tub here for Bonnie. Uh, she's our butter hit albino female. I'll no show you her going into the tub. Uh, to be honest, I'm not quite sure I'll survive it. Um, she's by far and away the feistiest ball python I've ever seen. Uh, we got her down in Doncaster a few years ago and she was all nice and calm and just going around my arm and there, was, there wasn't a hassle there at all. And we get her up and puts her in. We get her about a week for two, just to chill out and get used to her surroundings. And I've brought her out and everything was as normal. And I picked her up in my hand and she curled up round my hand and went up the back of my shoulder and just came round and gripped me straight on the nose. Um, the first time I've ever been bit on the nose by a snake. Um, it was quite interesting. But ever since then, she has showed her true colours. And it's not as if she's scared, 
um, she will actually sit there and wait on your hand getting into range and then she'll tag you. She's just one of the animals that's um, a wee bit antisocial. <laughs> so as I say, I'll no show you this one, um, I'll just crack on. This one here is for our girl Freya, she's um, an orange ghost or hypo female. Uh, this year she is going to your pied male and we're going to make a, a few double heads for future so that we can make hypo pieds because I really like the project I really like what it does with the snakes so it'll take us probably four years from here uh, well maybe three three and a half to actually produce them but I think it's going to be well worth making the the double heads for ourselves but that's her in a nice clean tub she's actually getting quite big she was she was the one that was always quite small I don't know if you can see the she's already tied twice this year so she's doing quite well not wanting to disturb her too much because I'm not wanting her to go off but aye this is Freya or Hypo <clears throat> well guys that's me finally got through everything eh, took me a wee bit longer than expected but as promised I'm going to go through some of our holdbacks for this year this wee guy as luck would have it, is just uh, in shed. This is our wee cherry bomb male. He's actually doing really well. He's uh, he's up to 470 grams now. So, aye. He's doing really, really well. I wasn't quite sure whether I was going to keep him or whether I was going to let him go. or, But I think, aye, I think I'll let him stay here and be part of our breeding programme. He's a wee cracker. So hopefully next year he'll be proven and um, we'll be making not only albinos but bells and maybe even more cherry bombs. He's an absolute eating machine so I have no doubt um, He'll be plenty big enough by next year. But anyway, I'll put him back and I'll let you see the next pairing, eh, the next hold back. This next wee girl is one you have seen recently. She's an Enchi. Possible blade, sixty-six percent hit clown. Um, definitely going to keep her. She's a, as you can see, she's absolutely stunning. I mean, the camera isn't actually doing her justice with the colours, but she's eating really well. And she's still small, and there'll be, there'll be a few years before she goes breeding. But I can't wait to see what she produces. She's absolute top quality. She's got a wee scale in her head there, but that'll come off. She's a wee beauty. And she's one that we're definitely, definitely going to hold back. I'm absolutely amazed. I mean, although we never got any visuals out the clutch, just the quality of these, wee, these hatchlings it actually makes you proud to have produced them she's absolutely stunning I'll stick her back and I'll let you see the next one and this girl here is our pinstripe hey, hypo that we produced this year I've actually held back a pair of these so that I can put them together in a couple of years 
make hypo pins. I love the way she's turned it. She's actually quite feisty and she's been a good eater for the start. It's just a shame her sibling wasn't the same. I can't, I can't wait to see how the, the pairing turns out. It's a lot more gold through her than I would expect for a, just a standard pin. A bit more kind of yellow through the gold. So, um, I think that's probably the, the hypo. Let's go through her. But yep, her and her, her brother's going to be one that will we'll keep them back in the rack and we'll just let them grow up. And when they're big enough, we'll put them together and go for some visuals. I'll stick her back in her top. I know I've showed you this girl quite a few times before, but I just can't get enough of her. As I say in the last video, the camera doesn't do her justice at all. But she's absolutely gorgeous. And she's not a great eater, but she's beautiful. I think this one will be the last that I'm going to show you today because the video is actually running quite long. So I'll not bore you too much longer. Um, if I could just touch on the mental health again. Just remember that you're, you're never ever alone. You're only ever a phone call away. And no matter what's happening for you, there is help out there. Um, just reach out to somebody. I can assure you they'll be glad that you did. It takes a lot more guts to reach out and say, look, actually there's something not right here. I need some help. It was certainly one of the hardest things I've ever done, but it was the most worthwhile thing I've ever done. So please, if he's are feeling like that, you know, just reach out to somebody. There is always somebody going to be there to listen and always there's always going to be help. So please, as I say, don't sit there on your own just saying nothing. And I think on that note, I'll leave you until the next video. And thanks for listening, guys. Take care.